Hello friends, this video on equilibrium part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched all the previous parts. Let's talk about a new topic called ionic equilibrium. What is ionic equilibrium? Before we start ionic equilibrium, let's start with electrolytes. What are electrolytes? So electrolytes are nothing but substance which conduct electricity in their aqueous solution. As the name suggests, electrolytes, that means substance which conduct electricity in their aqueous solution. For example, I have some aqueous solution of NaCl and I put in water to make it aqueous and you put the setup like this where you have a battery, you have a bulb and then for bulb to glow, the electricity has to flow from here to here, that means this aqueous solution should conduct electricity. So if aqueous solution conduct electricity, that aqueous solution will be electrolyte. Correct? So substance which conduct electricity in their aqueous solution will be called electrolyte. So NaCl if you take, it will conduct electricity. So there are different kinds of electrolyte. Some are strong electrolytes which ionized completely in the solution. For example, if you have one mole of NaCl and you'll put in water, it will almost all the uh, mole NaCl will break into Na plus Na minus. That means whatever amount of NaCl you put in the water, everything will break into Na plus and Na minus. Almost 99% of them will break. The other electrolytes are weak electrolytes. They are weakly ionized. For example, if you put this CST-COH in water, you will get H3O plus ion and CSCO minus ion, but maybe 10%. In this case, maybe 99% will be ionized. In this case, maybe 10% of these will be ionized, the rest 90% will still be there. Right? So they are weak electrolytes. Strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes. Also, if you see the difference here, in case of strong electrolyte, there is only one side reaction because almost 99% is complete. But in case of weak electrolyte, if you see, there is something called equilibrium. And there is an equilibrium sign here. Because in case of weak electrolyte, only a small percentage of the electrolytes actually get ionized and the reverse reaction also takes place. It reaches the equilibrium and then we can apply all the laws of equilibrium which we have learned. right? And that's why our focus will be weak electrolytes where uh, it partially gets ionized and there is an equilibrium here. So in case of strong electrolytes, strong acids also if you see, it gets almost completely ionized, it is not a reversible reaction, it is not an equilibrium reaction. But in case of weak electrolytes, it partially gets ionized and we have equilibrium there and we use all the principles which we have learned. Right? So, we will be focusing more on weak electrolytes. And please note, only weak electrolytes are in equilibrium as I told because they have only a small fraction of uh, the electrolytes get ionized. And please note, the electrolyte may be acid, base or salt. So we will learn more about acid, base and salt. We already learned those things in our class 10. So, but we will uh, do a revision once again for acid, base and salt. So what are acids? Acids are sour in taste and they turn blue litmus to red. So blue litmus to red is the 100% guaranteed test for acid. And they liberate dihydrogen on reacting with metals. For example, HCl react with some metal, you will get hydrogen gas. There are various definitions of acid we should be learning in the next few slides, but generally acids, they are sour in taste and they convert blue litmus to red. So there is a litmus paper you must have used in your lab which uh, if you are using blue ones, it will convert to red. Base on the other hand are bitter in taste and they turn red litmus to blue. So if you have red litmus paper, it will convert to blue. And a good example is a washing soda which we use for washing bottles. Now when acid and base, they are mixed in the right proportion, they give something called salt. So you know acid, you know base. You get salt if you mixed 
acid and base in the proper proportion jab sodium chloride sodium chloride is nothing but you get hcl plus noh you get nacl plus water so this was my acid this was my base i got salt similarly barium sulfate sodium nitrate so you get salt when you mix acid and base in the right proportion now having understood the definition of acid let's understand what are strong and weak acid and strong and weak base because for us we will be more focusing on the weak base and weak acid because this is the one where you get equilibrium and all the laws of equilibrium which we have learned is applicable a strong acid and strong base they ionize completely and the laws of equilibrium uh, doesn't hold to right so a strong acid is the one which that gets completely ionized or this certain bond for example you have h2so4 is a very strong acid the moment you put in water it becomes h plus and hso4 minus ion and almost 99 to 100% of this uh, h2so4 is ionized so if you want to see graphically how it is for example there are four uh, molecules the moment you put in water what happens is all these four molecules they had this hydrogen attached hydrogen plus attached h plus is attached but the moment you put in water what happens is all these molecules break and all if you see almost 100% in this case right we had four molecules which had h plus ions attached and all these four has liberated h plus now correct this is you can say a weak a very strong acid because it had four uh, molecules which had the h plus and attached the moment i put in water all these four molecules gave h plus ion so very strong acid almost 100% uh, ionization weak acids they only partially dissociate and they they exist at equilibrium and at equilibrium acid and the conjugate base are present in this solution we'll discuss more about conjugate base in the next few slides so example there is a weak acid and you have a equilibrium sign here if you see so it gets h plus and a minus ion but there is a reversible reaction also happening you want to see what happens for example in this case also i have a weak uh, acid here which had uh, four uh, molecules now only four molecules molecules i am taking when i put in water what happens is you see only two are dissolved here we see 50% ionization in this case two still has uh, the two stills are in ha form right so ha and two got uh, dissociated and two gave h plus ions so in case of weak acid the the ionization or dissociation is not complete may 30% 40% 50% depending on the strength of the acid right but in case of strong acid it's almost ionized so the acid which ionizes more is strong the acid which ionizes less is weak acid similar with the base same thing so a strong base is the one which dissociate completely in water for example nh is a very strong base the moment you put in water it becomes na plus and oh minus ion very very strong base almost 100% ionization but again weak base is the one which is partially dissociated and it exists in equilibrium and here also we have both acid and the conjugate base here we have both base and conjugate acid we'll discuss more about this thing uh, when we talk about conjugate base and conjugate acid so for example if you see ammonia is a very weak base and when you put in water it becomes nh4 plus and oh minus and here if you see is an equilibrium maybe 30% is ionized i don't know how great up but maybe a very very small fraction of this is ionized and that's why you have equilibrium sign please note there is no equilibrium sign here there is an equilibrium sign here there is no equilibrium sign here and there is an equilibrium sign here. So we discussed a lot about strong and weak acid it's a good ppt where you have a list of strong acid and strong base if you see hydrochloric nitric acid sulfuric acid hydrobromic hydroiodic perichloric these are all strong acid if you talk about weak acid we have acetic acid formic acid hydrochloric acid hydrocyanic acid nitrous acid hydrogen sulfate ion is all my weak acid talk about strong base noh koh bah2 barium hydroxide potassium hydroxide sodium hydroxide they are all strong base we talk about weak base ammonia methylamine pyrene ammonium hydroxide they are all weak base please uh, remember these uh, uh, strong acid and strong base 
if you want you can note down these values in some paper and just learn these because it's good to know what are strong acids and strong bases when you solve questions uh, with the acid and base itself you can make out it's strong or weak and then you can take proper steps thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again